Our next speaker, Gerrit, happens to be also a sponsor, but he, he sponsors a very specific um, uh, task in sponsorship. He sponsors students. So we wanted to highlight these uh, things for one, one minute at least. Yeah, uh, last year we had five students with us, this year only four because one had to uh, cancel at last minute. But maybe the four of them, if they are here, if not, there, there will be consequences, can, can raise their hands. So we have uh, Anne and Maike and Franziska and Christian over there. So, and we are uh, quite happy about uh, yeah, meeting these uh, young people. Some of them we knew already. Uh, most of them we didn't um, because it's always a good uh, opportunity to, well, test drive your future employees um, and uh, to uh, expose them to our lovely community. So glad they are with us and glad to be sponsoring this. Thank you. Okay, and then um, I also have a, a, a talk for you uh, entitled A Text Structure Epi Schema for TEI. And the TEI enthusiasts would have uh, said for the TEI, and in that you can recognize that I'm more an outsider to the TEI community, um, but still um, maybe some useful ideas for them. Okay, what's it, it about? Uh, is the font size okay? Can you read it? Yes. Um, it's about schema customization, in particular uh, schema constraints um, that can be expressed as a grammar and that can be, well, applied like Schematron on top of an existing uh, base grammar, and that in, particularly, in particular should support uh, decent content uh, completion in uh, tools uh, such as Oxygen or primarily Oxygen. This was my main interest behind that. And I call this approach an epi schema, so um, epi on top of a, a base, base schema. Um, you probably are familiar with the distinction and the compromises between flexible and uh, prescriptive schemas. Um, digital humanis humanists want to be as flexible as they can with tagging everything with uh, yeah, whatever um, type they will uh, call it. And um, on the other hand, some publishers are more, more and more adopting also TEI for their uh, publication and then they want to um, enforce stricter rules for authoring uh, or also for um, facilitating development of, of rendering style sheets maybe for EPUB production or so so that they don't uh, encounter any um, random um, construct in, in the, the XML. So they want to have a base conformance with some agreed upon schema and then extra co constraints for their publishing workflows. And this is part of the motivation of that authoring support and conversion uh, pipelines. So uh, to look at the structural divisions in, in TI, um, uh, TI has elements for everything, uh, hundreds of elements, but for the, the hierarchy they have uh, mostly div, and uh, div can be typed. So you can say something is a chapter and a section, uh, but if you then want to add some section with 
the bibliography and you want to enforce rules for journal authors or whatever, that the bibliography should come after the sections, uh, then this uh, very loose type-based uh, free text type uh, value um, approach um, doesn't constrict them enough. So we see that in the um, bibliography, one thing is that it should com come after the sections and another constraint would be um, <clears throat> if you have sections here, um, in TI, like many other uh, uh, um, vocabularies, um, th there's no paragraph like content allowed after the hierarchical structures have uh, finished, so you can have paragraphs or these plain bibliography lists after your last uh, section div. And uh, so what you will do is to wrap your bibli bibli bibliography list within another div. Um, and then there's some ambiguity where to place the heading. So if you have a, uh, in principle, the, the bibliography list itself may, may carry a head element, but also the surrounding div that you inserted for um, conformance with the basic uh, TEI customization that you're using. Um, so this is one thing that a publisher might want to uh, constrain um, so that they don't need to expect any combination of, of uh, headings in their rendering style sheets. Um, another thing that the TI community came up with is a so-called floating text. So you have that limitation that uh, after a uh, div, there must not be another paragraph. But sometimes you have structural units that are just floating in the surrounding text, um, like sidebars or boxes or a whole letter. Um, and therefore, they have floating text and it's desirable for publishers, for example, uh, to restrict the admitted uh, type values for, for floating text. Um, so how should we, uh, what, what should we require uh, from a uh, constraint mechanism for, for uh, adding the, the additional restrictions? Um, an important thing is that uh, we don't want to look too deep into the base schema. We essentially want to, want to treat this, it as a, as a, a black box, and uh, in particular there are some decisions about granularity uh, of, of content that determine how easily they can be extended and, and restricted. Um, we ideally don't want to bother with that. And then, of course, we want to have in-editor and also batch uh, validation support. And we want to have these con context-dependent, um, constraint-aware uh, co content completion suggestions um, that Oxygen already provides uh, by, by reading uh, schemas and, and DTDs and looking what is admitted there and uh, providing you the, these nifty uh, completion list, and ideally, we want to have such a list also for the admitted um, types at a given uh, div. So candidates for, for adding these constraints are uh, wants to, to extend the, the base schema with uh, the uh, corresponding um, extension mechanisms, and then uh, second, certainly, our schematron. Uh, and but the approach that I'm presenting here, the, the EPI schema approach. Restricting, um, relaxing schemas, and the same approximately holds also for XSD, uh, is quite difficult. It's uh, more difficult than extending them. Uh, this is 
described by Eric van der Flist's, uh, in, in Eric van der Flist's relaxing uh, book, an excellent book. Uh, you all should buy it, particularly because the online version uh, seems to have faded away during the last days. So I, in order to, to quote this correctly, I had to buy this book, actually. I, and I did it, and you also now should, should do that too. Uh, sorry that Eric can't be here with us today, but uh, Eric, if you're watching, my regards. And yes, so this is difficult, and you see uh, why I, I just have an excerpt of the um, uh, TI All Plus relaxing schema. Uh, all plus means uh, it contains all of TI plus MathML plus SVG. It's a, a custom, it's a customization, but a very widespread one. Um, and you have the 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 named pattern for for div, the definition of of div, and um, it refers to the generic uh, typed attributes. And uh, this is really hard to um, to to make this uh, uh, context aware. So you see here what is not in here: uh, 49 lines of uh, relaxing schema. And if you imagine, uh, you created you you forked the diff definition for each context that you have, and then you would need to patch every occurrence where a div is possible to insert. Uh, the, the actual typed div that you want to have, this is really a cumbersome uh, task. You don't want to do that. Um, TI's own uh, meta schema language, ODD, is also not up to the task. Um, James Cummings of the uh, TI consortium, I think, uh, and University of Oxford, um, he confirmed this to me. He, he read a, a um, previous version of, of the paper a couple of days ago, and he admitted that ODD may, might be in the future. Uh, it, it might be possible to add these constraints. Currently, it is only possible by, um, by Schematron, which is not ideal. I come to, to that uh, quite soon. Um, and also, you can think about other mechanisms like uh, Eric described in in the in, in said relaxing book, there's an approach by Bob Ducharme, and mm, he annotated the re, uh, relaxing schema. You can add anything in, in, an, in a relaxing schema as long as it's in a distinct namespace, and then you can add any elements and attributes. And he decorated a schema and transformed then uh, transformed it then to to derived schemas. So uh, and you could do this probably without annotation. Write an elaborate XSLT that transforms that does these uh, tedious uh, tasks of um, changing the div model to 19 different div models or so. So it's uh, feasible, but you still have to know uh, the inner wirings of the base schema. And um, we wanted to have something that can treat it as quite opaque. Um, yeah, Schematron. I just scribbled down three of these rules that I formulated in, in Schematron and, and applied this Schematron um, to, to a sample document. Of course, it works. Um, um, but it has uh, three, uh, two drawbacks. Um, content completion is quite difficult. Uh, George Bina explained it to me again. You would have to, I mean, it's difficult to, to analyze the XPath expressions uh, in each Schematron rule, uh, which actual values for some attributes uh, would be possible. Uh, certainly, you, you could um, look into the base schema and see what it's, uh, is allowed there, and then um, pre-validate it. If somebody entered this uh, element, would this still be valid? Uh, but for this, uh, since type 
is a, a free form attribute. Uh, users can enter any uh, values there. So it could be really difficult to look into the schematron rules and see which attribute values are in fact legal at a certain position. Um, you could take, uh, Rick Jellyfee wrote a tool that converts an XSD schema to schematron rules. Uh, it works for almost everything that is covered by XSD, so this could be uh, an approach, but still uh, you, you cannot have um, the, the nifty content completion with that. Um, so I uh, used our um, XML model instruction. Uh, thanks, Jirka, for that. <laughs> um, and, and added a, a second one to in, uh, in front of my TI document. So I'm referring here to the, to the base schema, TI all in this case, not plus. Um, and then I have a, um, an epi schema, which is a, a relaxing, uh, the rules themselves are about 10 kilobytes or so, plus document. Uh, uh, thing, and the the rules in that epi schema are like, or the most central rule is the almost anything pattern that will uh, allow anything except for certain contexts uh, like um, a body where you have constraints. So you, you start at the body level to constrain uh, which type divs uh, might might occur uh, below uh, body. So this is the most uh, central uh, rule. And here in, in body you see uh, that it's referring to uh, the part or the, you can have a part or, or, or chapter or anything. So it doesn't um, specify the complete TI file for you. It's not a schema customization in that sense that applying this um, grammar to the schema will, will check everything that you want to, to check. Uh, it's just uh, in conjunction with the base schema uh, that uh, you, you will restrict uh, what the base schema permits at some point, you will restrict it in some context, and in other context you will be uh, entirely liberal and allow anything. Um, and the, here you see in the chapters, it will refer to the sections model, and in the sections, it will then again start to allow just anything. So this is uh, the main concept for, for epi schema, the almost anything pattern, and then uh, specific uh, small uh, schema snippets for defining your um, detailed content model. For bibliography, it would look like, like that. So you, you have uh, the, the head here. Uh, you have the div element with a certain attribute and a head. And then um, uh, you have the uh, list bibble element without allowing without allowing a head ins inside it. So this is the way that we enforce this uh, constraint. So, uh, um, so far, it's quite good. Uh, it's an, like, schematron, orthogonal, non-invasive approach, um, and it restricts the base schema as desired. Um, but only uh, with regards to validation. If we look at oxygen's um, content completion, I mean, they could change it, um, uh, but uh, it, it seems to only use the first XML model instruction associated with the document. So you would have to decide, will I have the full list of content completion from the base schema, or will I just need the, the tiny ones but uh, that, that don't make many useful suggestions where the base schema um, would, would give you a choice of elements to insert. Um, 
So th this is not not so so good, but I thought if I only have one XML model to associate with my document, then it needs to be NVDL, and then um, it, it's a small small wrapper uh, around these schemas. So you have a, an NVDL that um, as a basic validation has the, the base schema and also for the same elements, the, the, the epi schema. Um, and if we are using all plus, we need to uh, make sure that in that mode we will also uh, use this schema for checking MathML and SVG. So you can do this. This was a, was a thing I had to learn also, um, how to properly use this NVDL stuff, and I found it um, quite nifty. Um, so we have an NVDL, and uh, then we have the choice of uh, chapter or part attributes at our top level div uh, in Oxygen uh, 18.1. Um, however, when we uh, are at a position where each um, schema provides some choices uh, for, these, for, the, the, for the attribute here, we had, no, we had no choice from the base schema, so we have only the, the two choices of the epi schema. Um, but at another location in, within the list bibble, I hope you can, you can see that we have the the full list of content completion of the underlying TI schema plus uh, the, uh, um, what, what the um, EPI schema allows. So basically, we, we are not restricting it here to, um, to, to Bibble elements, so we would be able to insert a head element here. Although after insertion, it would be marked as invalid because validation um, takes into account uh, uh, both things, um, but the completion is not optimal. And uh, I wrote to Oxygen support and George Bina personally uh, yeah, kind of fixed that or implemented this feature request to not use the, uh, the union of what each schema would allow at a given position but to use the uh, intersection. And then it, it works like that. We, we are only allowed to, to insert Bibble here, or I have a, he made an, um, uh, a better version of Oxygen available to me. Uh, let me just uh, see. Um, so I can insert here a div and then I, I can insert a glossary and then the section that comes after that will be marked, uh, marked as, as erroneous because the um, glossary and bibliography must come after sections and it correctly uh, flags head as an error here and if I look at the um, suggestions, I can only insert Bibble. So, um, th thanks, not Obama, but George Bina. Um, Oxygen 19, I think, will be available in April. Uh, and uh, you all saw this now. George isn't uh, allowed to take this feature out of, of the product anymore. Um, yeah, uh, anticipating your question about uh, alternative approaches, whether it would be possible to have an, uh, the question that you didn't ask, but I was sure somebody would be asking that, and uh, I'm not particularly uh, fond of XSD, and I'm not using it, but I checked, and uh, it can be done with XSD 1.1. Uh, you need the, the exclusions. Uh, you need to allow anything but and this anything but uh, was only avail uh, available in XSD 1.1. You can exclude uh, queue names at a certain position. 
Um, however, the, the tools won't allow you to associate more than one XSD schema with a document, so it's, uh, it won't be that useful, probably. Another thing that I, uh, uh, that I kind of um, jokingly uh, suggested in my paper was high time ar architectural forms, so make it great again. And um, this is uh, a bit an approach the other way around. Uh, architectural forms, as I understood them, uh, allow you to, to define a derived schema where you have proper section and bibliography and chapter elements, and you map them so that the final uh, parser will see them as typed divs. So it's not uh, keeping your TI base vocabulary with divs uh, and checking whether you use the types correctly, but defining uh, new custom elements. Uh, which we didn't want to do. So it, uh, in principle, could be useful for uh, um, uh, another approach, but not for this uh, uh, schema on top. But the good thing is, if you if you're using DTD or what, for your base document, you can still uh, associate via XML model uh, uh, an additional relaxing schema with it, and uh, at least have the benefit of the additional validation maybe not uh, with respect to content completion. Um, yeah, how, what else can this be applied to? Um, there was a question on, on the TI list whether one could have uh, restrictions for top level divs just below body and uh, also uh, content completion for that. I implemented this, uh, it was quite easy with that approach. And you, more and more publishers are switching to HTML for editing. There's, for example, uh, Sanders Kleinfeld's uh, of um, Riley, uh, the, his HTML book, it's available as XSD. You could easily have uh, implemented that using a base HTML uh, relaxing schema and then um, then just add uh, an epi schema that probably would tell the people not to use divs but sections or uh, that uh, no no paragraphs are allowed after a section uh, terminates and also of course context aware class values um, and of course this is uh, good if you if you are authoring html in in an editor that can do some this content completion, then these uh, rules would also apply. Um, not familiar with DITA, but uh, uh, from uh, John Lumley's uh, talk, I think two years ago, we, we know, or was it, I don't know, um, we, we know that there are many things specified by class values, and maybe they also want to have a grammar for that, so it could be useful for them. Um, yeah. Epi schema can be done. It's useful, at least I think that it's useful. Tool support is on its way. And I also think it's a cool name for that. I mean, particularly in the TI community uh, with uh, some classicists in it. And I thought it's, it, it is quite fitting to call uh, that. Okay. Thank you. So, we have a few minutes for questions before the break. Any question? I'm, um, I'm listening to this, uh, they saw all these divs and then the different names and making constraints and then having to go through all kinds of hoops to make it all work. And I'm really thinking why are people in the TEI community not looking at DITA as an alternative? I just tweeted that we could easily make, you know, that would take just one day to make a specialization in DITA that has all the TEI tags plus all those constraints, and it would all work. So um, and we don't, wouldn't have to have a, an epi schema or these namespace validation things and all those kinds of hoops, and it would work in Oxygen of five years ago. So why would we stick to TI in these cases where it's obviously not sufficient? Why not move to something better? Um, I wouldn't think that um, 
a schema that still uses DTD as its schema language is, is something better uh, for once. So I'm, I'm not in, in either community. I'm, I'm not in the DITA and I'm not in the TI community. So you should probably ask the, the TI people. Uh, but this approach, um, yeah, you have to, to take some steps to, to make it possible, but uh, I find it a, a, a nice way to have an, an ISO standard such as relaxing and uh, NVDL uh, and uh, be able to um, express your grammar constraints in these languages and add them and this uh, use it as configuration for for an editor for content completion. I, I find this quite cool and it's not limited to TI. Uh, you could ask any community why don't they uh, sw all switch to DITA and maybe this is what you think but I wouldn't, I would certainly uh, not DITA uh, for anything. Oh, sorry, don't want to be offensive to the DITA community. So one more question, Peter. So should, I, should I start? Well, oh, so, oh, sorry, Steve. Well, my idea would be that DITA could, le could learn something from this, because specializing, <laughs> specializing a data schema is overly complex. <laughs> so, so if if I if we have time, sir. Yes, it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, well, I. Um, I think it'd be let, interesting. Let the Dutch fight later. Yeah. Answer, well, I, th yeah. I think it'd be an interesting project for a did, a Elliot or some other DITA person to try to tackle TI and DITA. That'd be cool. I, I, I'm not against it at all. Um, but to talk about the, the, uh, uh, Garrett's epi schema, I think this is a really interesting idea. Thank you very much for the paper. I have, as you know, taken a look at this a little bit before, um, but not nearly this carefully. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, but to be fair, the actual example that you used uh, of, of section, section has to be followed by, you know, bibliography has to follow the sections. I, I, I'm gonna have to contradict James. It actually can be done in ODD. Um, the odd language does support that. It's not particularly easy or elegant, but it can be done. Uh, and of course, constraint of attribute values and all that stuff is already done in ODD. So um, we have to find some other co-occurrence constraint that ODD can't handle, because it cannot handle a general purpose co-occurrence constraint. Uh, um, but that particular one, it can, so you have to, Find another example, sir. Yeah, the other question is whether it also can um, uh, provide you with content completion, content completion for that. Maybe it can restrict it. So for validation purposes, yeah, maybe yes. But um, I'm not so sure about really context-dependent uh, models, other models in ODD. On, uh, um, at least it would be an, still an invasive approach. You would have to write your own customization, and I wanted to avoid that. I wanted to just to avoid a schema right. like layer on top of that and have content completion. Right. So to be clear, I'm not quite sure how you're using the term customization, but if you're using it in the TI sense, you have no choice. You may not avoid it. It is required step. Yeah. You cannot I'm, be TI compliant without a customization. As I said, I'm not a member of the right. TI community. I, I hear you. And, and my publishers um, who I work for, they want to have uh, standard customizations, but, which is an, uh, an uh, contradiction, uh, contradiction in right. itself. But, but, but to answer your, your very intelligent question of does, does, will content completion work, uh, the answer is it depends on how you do it. The, the schematron method, you don't get completion. And with the pure odd method, you do. Uh, the problem is the latter is quite a bit more difficult to, to do. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, George, you want to implement ODD, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I might add that uh, before you ask George, uh, it, uh, and that was your suggestion, it can all, also be configured in Oxygen. So you don't have to use that approach. You can also have, make your own custom configuration to have your content completion no matter what underlying mechanism you use. Uh, thank you, Gary. It's George Bina from Oxygen. Uh, so I think that while in uh, DEI or even in DITA, you have possibilities to um, enforce constraints on, on the documents. In general, people don't do it in many cases. So they just take the standard schemas. And in other cases, uh, it is useful to have the document more relaxed, but interact with that document through some constraints. So to have these constraints as a separate layer, not necessarily the main schema for the document. 
because those constraints may be useful sometimes for a specific category of users. So having this idea that layers two different schemas, one that provides the general structure and then a constraint level, I think is quite useful, not necessarily as a replacement for the constraints that can be generated from the language, but as a tool that we can use in different situations depending, you know, it's a practical tool. You mean validation error and hints? <laughs> no? So thank you. No? But, uh, George, validation and hints? You made yeah. different layer of validation and you give le information with different tips or like, like yes. programming errors and warning and this kind of thing. Is it that? Yes, so, so in this case, it, uh, there, each schema will validate the document basically, yeah. right? So you'll get whatever that schema specifies. Yeah, but you can say this error is less important than this error. Can you? Uh, well, you, you can do that, that in Schematron, not with the relaxing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any question? No. So you're free to go to the break. Thank you.